The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Can you do me a favor, let me know you can hear me properly and see my screen all right. Um, you should be able to see uh, the Convertry backend um, with like a demo funnel with one page in it. Okay, we've got all good, all okay. Uh, DJ Coulter says can hear and see. So is Apple, Mike, RD. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so this is our Let's Stand a get Getting Started webinar. Um, I am Neil. I'm one of the co-founders of Convertry. Um, if, you've, if you're in the Facebook group at all, you've probably seen me hanging out there a bit. In fact, if you go to, uh, this is the Contact Us page on our website, and I am the one in that rather fetching red hat. Uh, you can't actually see it from this angle, but it also had like two big green parakeet feathers on the other side. Uh, the, the other guy here um, is Andy, who is my business partner. He, he basically does all the coding stuff. So like anything in the app, like anything that you've used, he either built it or he managed uh, the developers who did. So like I said, this is our standard getting started call. Like Convertry is, Convertry is a very big app. It's big, it's complicated. There's always going to be a bit of a learning curve um, when you're trying to first try and use a system like this. And we want to try and make sure that you get through that learning curve as quickly as possible. And so what I'm going to do on this call is I'm going to like build a very simple funnel completely from scratch. So you can see uh, just how I do it. Uh, we're going to build a simple lead funnel, which is like a squeeze page and an opt-in and a thank you page, sorry. And when we're done, uh, both these pages will be live. They will be connected together. People will be able to sign up um, on, the, on the squeeze page. They'll be automatically redirected to the thank you page. They will automatically be added to the autoresponder list. And when they're on that thank you page, they will be able to download our lead magnet. So it's a simple funnel, but it'll be like complete. It'll be a, a full unit. After that, I'm going to show you basically some of the editor hacks that I use. Um, I use Convertry an awful lot myself, both for like business stuff and my own personal things. Um, and there's certain ways of using the editor that I find make it an awful lot easier. So I'm just going to show you what those are. Once we're done with all that, I'm going to hang around for a Q&A session. So I'll be here basically either until you run out of questions or until my voice just gives out, whichever happens sooner. Um, and you can ask me like you can ask me anything you want about like about Convertry, about marketing, I mean about anything else as well if you want. I just can't promise I'll answer everything, um, or that I can answer everything. Um, so yeah, so obviously I'll be um, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat box as we do. Uh, the demonstration as well. So if like if I'm going too fast at any point, if you want me to explain things like in a bit more detail, then like please do put a question in the chat. I'll try and keep an eye on it. I'll like go go through it as we're going. Um, only thing I'd ask is while the demonstration is happening, please keep your questions to basically stuff that's happening in the demonstration, stuff you've just seen. Anything else like just save it until the end in the more general Q and A session, and we'll sort it out then. They'll just help us keep everything on track. Uh, question here already, will this webinar be posted in Convertry? Uh, yes, we're recording it. Um, as long as the recording uh, works all right, then there'll be a replay. It'll go up in the knowledge base. And in fact, uh, you can see the last time we ran one of these. Uh, that is in the knowledge base already. So let's go to the getting started webinars. So this was this was the last one we ran uh, at the end of April. I'll just stick that uh, link in the chat at the moment. So that is the recording of the last one of these um, that happened. So like if you can't hang around for the full webinar, like if you have to like leave at any point, you know, that that's absolutely fine. The recording will be there. And if there are like occasionally they happen. If there are any problems with this recording, then you can just go and watch the last one that we did. So,
Uh, Nima's asking, is there sound? Uh, yes, go just check. Can everyone still hear me okay? Is there, is there any issue there? Okay, yeah, the sound generally seems to be fine. Um, hopefully uh, that was just a glitch at your own Nima that's sorted out now. Okay, so let's get into uh, let's get into the demonstration. So we are going to build, let's say we're going to build a simple squeeze page, a simple thank you page. Um, the squeeze page we are going to build is going to look kind of like this. Well, I'm not aiming to like copy it exactly. It'll just, like, I'll build something that looks like this one. So a fairly simple page, but I think fairly nice looking. Uh, this one is in the uh, the weight loss niche. And so the first thing we, we're going to do is we're going to make our new page by clicking new page uh, in the corner up here. Now this opens uh, the page template selector. You can see there's a lot of templates here to choose from. And if you want to use a template, then you can you can select any one. Um, you can click on the preview button to see what they look like beforehand. We're not going to use a template for this demonstration um, because I want to show you how to build a page from scratch, just because that lets me show you like more stuff you can do with Convertry a bit easier. So to do that, we're going to click the create a page from scratch button up here, and we're going to call that, uh, we're going to call that opt-in. So we'll click on edit page uh, to go into it. And here we have uh, the Convertry canvas. So at the moment, it is uh, completely blank. And we are going to turn this into that. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to add a background image. And so we'll drag on uh, the image element uh, from the toolbar. And this brings up the media selector. So we have a load of images here. Like in this case, the, these are ones that I've previously used on the account. Uh, you can upload your own images. Uh, you can also search Pixabay directly if you click on uh, the search Pixabay option there. And you can type in, like you can type in anything you want. Um, let's go, for, I don't know, let, let's say swan. <laughs> okay, well, that's embarrassing. Apparently Pixabay isn't working at the moment. I'll have to check into that. I hope that's an issue at their end rather than ours. But it doesn't matter in this case because I was going to use one of my own images in any case. So I'm going to drag that on there. And in fact, I did also get this picture from Pixabay, um, but I don't generally get them from the API that we've got in there, mostly because the API only lets you down, download the images up to a certain size. Um, I think it's 1920 by 1280. And that's like that's absolutely fine for the most part, but you also get far higher resolutions if you go to the Pixabay site itself and download them on your own. And normally you wouldn't want pictures quite this big, like on a website, because you can see here it's like 5,200 by three and a half. The, the file is some like four or five megabytes. And that's not the kind of thing you normally want on a web page. But because Convertry does like does all the optimizations, you can use images like basically as big as you want. So I tend to get the biggest sizes just to make sure I get all the detail and it and they look really good. So we'll select that. So now we have our image and we can pick that up. We can just drag it and move it wherever we want. Uh, we can resize it using these drag handles. Now I'm going to make this one full width by clicking on this button in the Quick, quick actions toolbar. And we're just going to increase the size by, we'll drag that up a bit and we'll drag this down. Now I don't have like a precise size I'm aiming for. But I'm, I'm really just doing this by eye, just doing it until like I think it looks good. So if I decide, okay, maybe, maybe I want a bit more for on the screen, we can extend it down. If maybe a bit less, we'll move it up again. And that's one of the things I quite like about designing in Convertry um, that, uh, Basically, you can just adjust things until you think they look good. You don't have to be a um, you don't have to be a top-notch designer to get something looking good. You can just play with it until it does. 
so the next part is we're going to put the uh, panels at the top and bottom, which are these bits here. So you see, so you've got these like beige orange things above and below the image on this page. We're going to add those in now. So I've started by dragging on a panel from uh, the form toolbar there. And we'll just put that at the top. We'll resize it. And again, make that full width. And now we'll change the background color. We've got the properties panel open here. We'll go to the background tab. Click on the background fill icon. And this opens up the color picker that you can adjust to whatever color you want. So we can drag that around and you can see it updating on the screen as I do it. So you don't have to like you don't have to select a color, then hit select and see how it looks. You can actually adjust as you go. Now that was a kind of I said it was a kind of beigey orange thing, so it was about about that. Maybe something a bit more like that. I think that's close enough. Now I'll add another one at the bottom. And to do that, we'll click the clone button up here uh, with this one selected. So we'll get a copy. And we will drag that down to the bottom of the image. And we'll make that one a bit wider. So we've now already got like most of the backing of the page. What we need now is uh, this panel with like the actual content on there. Uh, Mike, Mike said it looks like Pixabay is on a go slow at the moment. So, okay, that's good to know. Always helpful on these calls when you find it's like the other people and not us that have the bug. <laughs> it's all a bit embarrassing when it's us. So next, I said we're going to build this panel. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just drag another panel on. And we'll get that like it's about like that. And I'm not being too precise with the placements at the moment. Like all these elements are really just being thrown on the page. Um, we will arrange them properly once we've got them all on there. So we we'll use that as our uh, backing panel. And now we'll add the text. So we'll drag on a text element. And you can type into here, like this works just like Word does. We just type straight onto the screen. And another one. Okay, and then we had another couple of bits of text above and below the form. So we'll just add those on too. Oops. So a couple of things you might have noticed there. Uh, first one, like I misdragged uh, when I was trying to move the text box. That's because basically I clicked a bit outside. But the thing that um, the thing that you might have seen there is that the stuff we put inside that container all came with it. Like Convertry understands containment, so you don't have to move each element individually. You can just move the backing container and get all the elements you placed inside, move them all at once. Uh, the other thing you might notice is that I am a double spacer after a full stop, and I make no apologies for that. So now we've got the text on there. Uh, we want to make it look good. Uh, 
Uh, Bruce is asking, is this live or a replay from the last webinar? It looks the same. It is the same presentation, uh, Bruce, but it is a live webinar. Like I'm, I'm really here. We tend to run the same presentation every time because obviously we're getting new, we're getting new people um, coming into Convertry every day. And so we want to run this getting started presentation fairly regularly, just so everyone can, like, everyone can see it. Uh, so yes, now we want to make that text look good. And we can do this, um, we can do it element by element. So you can select the element, you can highlight the text in the element and then change, like change the font, uh, change the size, change the color. You can change all that from the text toolbar up here, um, but I prefer to do it through default styles. And default styles is a feature that lets you update all the text on a page at once. Um, to access that, we go to the page menu and select uh, default text styles. And we can change the font, let's say uh, Leto. And let's up the line spacing a bit. Let's make that like 1.8. I quite like having a lot of white space between lines because it may, just makes things a bit more readable, I think. And now you can see every text box has updated. And this makes it very easy to basically change the look of a site or a template very quickly. You can say, you know what, I don't like Leto. I want to try it with, uh, I, don't know, I want to try it with Sinzel. And you can make that one change and see how all the text um, looks like with that new one. And in this case, it looks extremely Roman. So yeah, I'm not sure I like that very much. We'll go back to later. But it does make making changes and making updates very easy. Uh, you can also set different styles for headings. So if we go to, if we go back to default text styles, you can see we were adjusting the paragraph style. You've also got the heading one style, the heading two style, and you can change how hyperlinks look. So let's say for heading one, let's use, uh, let's use Noto Sans. I'll make that 24. Uh, the line spacing is fine on that one, I think. And if we hit done, then you can see nothing has actually changed on the page because none of our text elements are currently using uh, the heading one style. Uh, we can change that by selecting the text. And in more, click heading one. And that uses uh, the style we just set. Uh, Linda says, I was late getting on. Will there be a replay? Uh, yes, there will. Um, we have, uh, I said, we're recording at the moment. Um, as long as that works fine, like this replay will be going up in the knowledge base. And even if it doesn't, then you can see the replay of the last time uh, we ran this presentation. Uh, that's in there already. So if you go to help.convertry.com and then select getting started webinars, then you'll see the recording uh, available there. So now we want to make this text a bit smaller. So we'll highlight that and we'll change the font size using the uh, text toolbar up here. Now this one I'm not doing with default styles because we don't want all the text on the page to be this small. We only want these text boxes uh, to change. And now we want to get uh, the form in there. And you can see there is an extra menu in this bar for form elements. So we'll drag on a first name field. We'll drag on an email field. And we'll drag on a submit button. And then, as I said before, I'm not worrying about the positioning at all at the moment. We will sort all that out like after everything has been, uh, has been added. So we will change 
uh, the placeholder text in here. So select the element in the properties panel, you'll see an input properties uh, tab. Now these tabs change depending on what element element type you've got selected. So if we had uh, the backing panel selected, then you'll see it, you have the option to change an image. If you have a form field selected, then you've got the, in, the option to change the form field settings or change the input properties. So you can change the placeholder text if you want, just by adjusting that. Change the font family. I'm going to make this one. I'm going to make this one lighter again so it matches. We'll take the size down a bit. We'll make that 14. We'll do the same on the uh, email field. And on the button, then let's change the label to download now. And let's use um, let's use Noto Sans again. Match the uh, match the header font. So now we've got all the different bits in the panel. Um, now we just need to line everything up correctly. And to do this, Convertry gives you a lot of alignment options, so you don't have to do everything by eye. So the alignment options can be found in uh, this ali alignment icon uh, on the Quick Actions toolbar. If you click the down arrow, then you can see the different options that are available. So to get everything looking nice here, we have the backing panel uh, selected. And from these alignment options, we're going to go with center align. And that will just snap all the different elements into the center of, uh, of this uh, backing panel. If we decide that actually maybe we want that a bit thinner, so we can shrink that. And we can just go back and do the same again. And it'll recenter everything. Uh, the other thing I'm going to want to do is arrange these form fields nicely. So to do that, we are going to multi-select them. So I've got one, now I'm holding down the shift button and I'm selecting the others. So all three are selected. Now I'll go back to the alignment options and use distribute vertically. And that puts all three of them just spread evenly between the first and last items. If we want, we can say, so, you know, actually maybe we don't want it spread out quite as much as that. So let's just move the bottom one, bottom one up a bit. Uh, there I'm using the arrow keys uh, to move up and down in little increments. And then we can select them all again, back to distribute vertically, and they all snap into place. And maybe we'll shrink that a little bit as well. There we go. Now, the last thing we're going to do with this panel is if we have a look at our uh, demo page, you can see here we've got these light beveled edges uh, on the box. And you can possibly see that the uh, the backing or the color of that panel, it's a bit transparent. But you can just see the uh, the backing image through it. So to create that effect, uh, with the panel selected, first of all, we're going to go into borders. And we'll change the border radius, or we'll make that 20. So that's given us uh, the beveled edges. Now to change the background, again, with the panel selected, we go into the background tab. On the color picker, I'm going to use white as the main color. And then on this slide on the right, you can change the transparency. So let's go with like, yeah, about 75%. So the last thing we've got to do uh, on this page is add the privacy policy link. 
To do that, we'll drag on another text element and we'll stick that in the footer. And you can see that we're automatically using uh, the default styles that we set earlier. So I'm going to, to add the link, I'm going to highlight that text and use the hyperlink button uh, from the text toolbar. And we'll add in the link that we want to send people to when they click here. So I'm going to use our like convertory privacy policy. Obviously, if you were building your own squeeze page, then you would use your own. And we'll set that to open in a new tab. Um, most good, I think if someone's clicking like the privacy policy on a page like this, you don't want to send them entirely away uh, from your opt-in form. It's far better to keep it open so it's easier for them to go back to it. And we'll hit save. And finally, we'll just align uh, this privacy policy box in the center of this uh, background panel. And we can do this just dragging it and using Convertry snap lines. You can see Convertry tells us uh, when we fit the middle. You can also do it through the alignment options like we did before by selecting uh, the backing panel. Go to alignment options and middle align. And that puts it nicely in the middle. So the final thing to check on this page is the mobile view. So we've built the desktop version and we can check the mobile view by clicking uh, the mobile designer up here in the top right. Now this is the automatic mobile page that Convertry has generated. Uh, from the from the desktop version. And I mean, this looks all right. Uh, we can absolutely change it if we want. Like if we decide we want to adjust the design, we can like we can move that to the side. We can maybe we decide we want the form up here on mobile and we'll have the description underneath. And you can move around any of these elements. You can change them like as much as you like. And the desktop view isn't going to be affected. Like we keep these separate so you can have a mobile view that looks the way you want it and a desktop view that looks the way you want it. One thing I am going to change on this mobile view though is I'm going to, I think I want uh, this text, I want it a bit smaller. Our default uh, scaling size for text on mobile is 150%. And the reason we use that is because that makes the text on mobile and the text on desktop like pretty much the same size on most mobile screens. Uh, but in this case, I think I want it a bit smaller. Now, again, you can do that element by element. You can select the text that you want to change the size and change it up here. But it's another thing that I prefer doing through default styles. So we'll go back to the default text style and we'll change that to, let's say 120. I'll go back to the mobile view and you can see that's smaller and not just, uh, it's not just this text that's smaller, it's also adjusted uh, the enter your details text and the your details are safe with us text. Again, because those are using the same default style, so it changes them all at once. And that has made our page in not very much time at all. Now, we haven't wired up the form yet. Uh, we will do that after we've built the thank you page, and I will show you why uh, when we do that. But before I get on to building that, does anyone have any questions on what they've seen so far? Uh, Ernie's asking, uh, how does um, how does someone post an image as part of or next to text copy? Um, I think if you mean just adding an image to the page, uh, you can do that in much the same way uh, you would add a background image. So we'll drag on like an image element, and let's um, I don't know, let's let's have these seagulls. 
So we can select that, we can resize that again, we can position that however we want. And we can just put that, we can put that next to the text, we can put it above, we can put it underneath. Um, you don't need to use images as background ones. Uh, though if you want to, then you can just make it full width and send it back that way. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, Isla4, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Isla4 says, I can't access the mobile version. Uh, if you're having problems like that, then the best thing to do is email support. Um, the, uh, the email address is support at Um I'll just stick that in the chat box for you. If you send them basically the details of your problem and the details of your account, so it's your, your login email so they can look it up, um, then someone will be able to look into that and see what the issue is for you. Um, certainly the way it should work is that you should just click on the mobile uh, the mobile button in the top right corner, uh, click that, and it will op just open the mobile editor for you. Shouldn't be any more to it than that. Uh, Mark's asking, do you always need to have a privacy policy? Uh, this is, I mean, it's generally good practice. Um, generally, the reason that you want it is for if you're running ad traffic uh, to the page, like if you're if you're paying for Google ads, if you're paying for Facebook ads and you're directing them to your squeeze page, uh, then they will generally require a privacy policy on the page or they won't let you run traffic to it. I don't think there's a legal requirement for it. So if you've, like if you're just, sending them traffic from your own email list, then you probably don't need one. Uh, but it's generally a good idea to have in any case. Um, it, I, don't know, I think it just makes people feel a lot more secure. Like even if they never read it, the fact that it's there and available, like it makes them feel better about signing up to your list. Uh, Leon's asking, how do you create a menu for a website? Uh, you can do that uh, with this menu element uh, down here. Again, you can just drag that on from the elements toolbar. I will run you through how to use that properly after we've done the demonstration, um, because that's not really a part of this. Uh, if I don't, like, if I don't get to it, do remind me when we get to the end. But it is there; it is possible. I will show you how to do it. Uh, Hans is asking, "What's the difference between an opt-in page and a squeeze page?" Uh, there's there's no difference. Really, they're just two different names for the same thing. Uh, Jerome's asking, how do you add a picture to the mobile version? Well, any pictures you add to the desktop version are automatically added to the mobile version. So if we like put on, um, let's get those seagulls back. So we can add our seagulls in there. Uh, Convert will try and work out where to put it on the mobile page. And that will automatically be added. If you want an image that is just on the mobile version, uh, then you can drag it onto the uh, desktop version like this and switch off show on desktop. So every element has options for show on desktop and show on mobile. Uh, the default is that they appear on both. You can, like if you want it to appear on desktop but not mobile, then you can switch off uh, show on mobile up here. And if we go to the uh, mobile view again, you'll see it's not there. If we do it the other way around, so show on mobile but not on desktop, you can see it's vanished here. But it is on the mobile view. Um, when you have images that are like not appearing on the desktop but are appearing on mobile, then as you can see here, Convertry sometimes has a bit of trouble working out where to put them, but it's easy enough to arrange like where you want the image. Like you can fairly easily shift the shift the content around so it sits where you want it.
uh, Tony's asking, how did you round off the panel? So to do that, uh, you select the backing panel, then go to Element Properties. And now there is a Borders tab uh, in the Properties panel. And with that, you can set the border radius. Now you can set them all individually. You can see they're all 20 here. Or if you switch on uh, this toggle, then you can just set one radius and it'll do it for everything. So let's say at the moment that's 20, uh, we could have uh, we could have 50, so it'll be a bit more round. We could have 10, so it's like far less round. I generally pick 20 because like, I, I like the way that one looks, but obviously it's entirely up to you. Uh, Rich is saying, when a person enters their email, where does it get collected? It will get collected in your autoresponder. Um, we haven't wired that up yet in this demonstration, but we will be getting there. Um, I'll show you how to do. I'll be showing you how to do that in a few minutes. Uh, Leon's asking, can you also go over creating templated elements so they can be used on many pages? Uh, yep, and totally show you that as well. Again, I'll do that after uh, this demonstration's over. Uh, Deo is asking, is the mobile version a responsive experience across mobile devices? Uh, yes. Basically, the the way Convertry does the mobile view is that it takes the what you give and it scales it to the size of the mobile screen. So, for instance, my phone is a Note 10 Plus. Um, it's about it's about as big as a smartphone can get without being a tablet, um, and it will show like what you're seeing here. The phone I had before that. Uh, was an S6, so far smaller. And can, like viewing the same page on that, Convertry would just scale the size of the page so it fit nicely on the screen. So it doesn't matter how um, it doesn't matter how big or how small the screen that your viewers are looking at it on. Like they'll always get a nice viewing for it. Um, we use uh, breakpoints to decide whether to show the mobile view or the desktop view. So I think if the width goes above 600, then it will show a scaled version of the desktop screen as opposed to the mobile one. So on bigger phones, again, much like uh, the Note 10 that I've got at the moment, if I change it to landscape, that will show the desktop view rather than the mobile one, because when the screen is that wide, the desktop is just a better experience. Uh, Mark is asking, can you import the opt-in page onto a website? Um, yeah, uh, you can use. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing this. Um, the way we recommend is if you've got, say, a WordPress site on your domain and you want to add a Convertry site to it, uh, the way we recommend is setting up a subdomain. Uh, you can do this. Again, I'll just go through the help, bay, help uh, knowledge base to find the right document for you. So there's a walkthrough here, um, publishing Convertry pages on a subdomain of your own site. And I'll stick that link uh, in the chat box for you. That will walk you through how to set up a subdomain on your existing site to publish your Convertry pages to. Uh, alternatively, I mean, you don't even have to have it on the same domain if you want. Um, you can just link people out like from your website directly to your Convertry page. Uh, that's also an option. Uh, Ian's asking, uh, can you change the size of the second image on mobile? Uh, yep, you can change the size of things on mobile just like you can on desktop. Uh, there's, I'm going to have to add those seagulls back again. I, re I should really stop deleting them. So again, so we had the, we've got our seagulls there. So here they are on the mobile view. We can. We can make those smaller, like we'll stick them up there. And again, that hasn't affected the size they are on desktop. Uh, we can change, like we can make that bigger. Mobile is still the way we put it.
Uh, Mark's asking, uh, any suggestions when using the YouTube player? It doesn't play the video at a proper size compared to using the Convertry player. Uh, it does, but you need to... Um, maybe le let me show you. So let's drag on the YouTube element. So the YouTube element, you can set it at any size you want, but it needs to match the um, aspect ratio of your video. Uh, if the aspect ratio of your video is different to the aspect ratio of the YouTube element, then you'll get like some black lines down the side where it's tried to fit the video into the space that the element is uh, is put. As long as the as long as the aspect ratio of the video matches the ratio of the element. So if your video is sixteen by nine, then make sure your element is sixteen by nine then it should just display nicely in the box. Uh, Dave is asking, if I create a squeeze page for a Google ad, do I need to use a custom domain for the squeeze page or does a subdomain work for Google ads the same as a custom domain? Uh, a subdomain will work fine. Basically, as long as you're using the same domain for the display URL and the destination URL, um, Convertry, uh, not Convert, uh, Google isn't going to care if you're using a subdomain or a custom domain. Uh, another question from Mark. Uh, could you show how to embed a video code rather than using a Convertry or YouTube player? Uh, yep, if you have video on a service, like that isn't one of the isn't one of the players we've got and isn't self-hosted, so it's not uh, Vimeo, Wistia, or YouTube. Then, as long as the uh, platform you're using gives you an embed code, then you can take that code, you can add it into a custom HTML element, which again just comes on uh, from the Elements toolbar. So you can set that again to whatever size you want. Click Edit HTML, copy and paste the embed code that they give you into here, click Save, and that will then display uh, where you've put it. You can do the same thing with pretty much any service that asks you to embed code on a page. OK, cool. Let's. Let's get back to uh, the demo. I'll just put the mobile version back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a thank you page. And once we've built the thank you page, we're going to wire up the form and set up uh, the connections. Let's take a quick swig of water first. I swear I'm still not used to talking this much at once. So we'll save this page and close it. Now, the thank you page I'm going to build, I'm going to basically build something that's very similar to the opt-in page. Now, there are like there are good marketing reasons for this. Like It's quite nice to have some congruency. Uh, so when someone is sent from one page to the next, they feel like it's part of the same thing. And it's also just quicker. So what I'm going to do first is click on the three-dot menu in the page card. And we'll go to more uh, down the bottom. And we'll click on clone. Give that a name. Thank you, page. So this has created like a complete copy of the page we just built. So if we go into edit page, then you see the whole thing's here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this uh, to become a thank you page instead. So we'll change uh, the title here. We'll go, Thanks for signing up. And like I said earlier, like it works just the same way Word does. Just highlight the text, type over it. Everything we set up earlier, like the default styles, they've all been copied, copied across. So let's say... Uh,
and we'll get rid of these fields because we won't need them. Just make it a bit smaller. Uh, I might I change the color of the uh, of the download button you know, so it's a bit different. Let's uh, so we'll go to background color. Let's um, what do we think? A green. Yeah, let's do that. And we'll put that uh, down there. So you see some, just some very quick adjustments. And I'll go back to the uh, alignment options just to make sure everything is centered inside. And now what we need to do is connect this button to our report download. Uh, so that when people click on it, they can just they can immediately download uh, the lead magnet that they signed up for. So to do this, we'll go into button settings again with the uh, with the button selected. Then you'll see this in the properties panel, and we're going to change the mode from submit to download. This gives us a download file option. So we're going to select our file. Now, I don't have any files available here at the moment, but again, we can upload one. So I'm going to take uh, this PDF that I've got, and I'm just going to drag and drop it on, and that will upload onto, like, onto the Convertry system. Now, you can upload you can upload PDFs, you can upload docs, you can upload zips. Um, I think MP4s, MP3s also work fine. Um, as long as the files are below 40 megabytes, then like you can add them on Convertry and just have the file delivery that way. If you've got bigger files than that, then you can use a service like S3 uh, to host them there and then just add the link to the button. Or you can host them uh, through a different system and put the link in your first email that goes out. Uh, that's also something that people do quite a lot. Uh, but in this case, because it's just like a few megabytes of PDF, we can do it through Convertry. So we'll select that file. And now you can see there is a download file available. So anytime someone clicks that button, they will just they will just be able to download the report that we promised. I'll just quickly check the mobile version. Now in this case, because there's not very much text, the mobile page is fairly shrunken, like there's just not enough content to spread it out. Uh, so I'm going to spread it out manually because I would like it to be like a bit more than that. So yeah, we'll make it like that instead. And now we are going to publish the page. So to do that, we'll click on Publish up here. And now we'll type in the path we want it to be published on. See, the domain I'm working on at the moment is neil.convertry.com. And I can type in anything I want here for the path for this particular page. So if I put in like demo slash thank you, then you can see down here the page will be published at neil.convertry.com slash demo slash thank you. So we'll hit publish. And we can view it, and that page is now live. And you can see it loaded pretty quick as well. So now we'll go back to our first page and we'll connect the form. Now, first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a wire. Not a wire. I don't even know why I said that. We're going to draw an arrow uh, between these two uh, pages by clicking on uh, this new arrow button in the bottom right hand corner of the page card. And we'll just select that page. And what this does is tell Convertry that if someone signs up on this page, 
we probably want them to go over here. And so it'll auto fill the details for us when we come to uh, connect the form. So I can see there's a few more questions come up uh, in the box. I will answer those once we've done uh, the form connection. So to connect uh, the form on the page, the first thing we want to do is check the type of these fields. Now oh, we need to connect the form first. So we'll click the form button up there. and select an autoresponder. Now these are all the different like API connections that we've got. See, there's quite a wide range of autoresponders there. Um, there's also uh, Zapier, if you've got one that isn't on that list, or you can use an HTML form connection. Now MailChimp is the autoresponder I've got connected with this account, so we're going to use that one. And we'll select our list which in this case is our demo test list. And now what we want to do is connect the type for the different autoresponder fields. Like Convertry has detected these different fields on our list, and we need to select a type for all the ones that we want, um, all the ones that we want filled from information on this page. So we're collecting the first name, so we'll put first name in there. Some fields are fixed. So for instance, you'll see email here has a fixed type of email. You can't change that. And the which fields are fixed and which ones you get to select will depend on the different autoresponders. Like some autoresponders have everything fixed. Some have nothing fixed. Most have some fields fixed, but not the rest. Um, as you can see in this case, MailChimp has the email field fixed, but the rest you can put as you want. And what the type is doing here is we will also we will do the same thing for the form inputs on the page. So in this case, like Convertry will look for the form input on the page that has the first name type, and it will take that information and put it in the autoresponder field, which we've also given the first name type. So it's it's like a matching exercise. And next, we set up a thank you page. And you can see because we already we've already published the thank you page URL and we connect it with an arrow, Convertry has also filled that for us. You can see it's there in the uh, suggestions box. If we had multiple pages um, connected with arrows to this page, then all those pages would be listed in the suggestions. So we can just pick the one we want. But that's done. And you can see, as I was saying here, uh, the field type uh, of this input is first name. Uh, the field type of this input is email. And so that's how Convertry will know which autoresponder field to put the information entered in here uh, in. Now we'll save that and we'll publish that again. So call that demo slash opt-in. Publish that. And again, that page is now uh, live. And that uh, completely works. You can sign up uh, on this page. You'll be taken, uh, your details will be added to the MailChimp list. You'll be taken to the thank you page uh, where you'll be able uh, to download the lead magnet. So let's have a look and see what other questions came up. Uh, Francis is asking, does a landing page and thank you page always, always require a domain name? Um, you'll always need a domain name in that you'll always need somewhere to publish them, um, but you don't need to use a custom URL if you don't want to. Uh, like you can use, like we will provide you with a Convertory subdomain. So if you don't want to get your own domain, then you can just use that. Uh, Mark's asking, if you have a downsell page, how do you set up the trigger so that if a customer isn't interested in buying, they're just taken to the downsell page? Um, the easiest way to do that is simply to use 
uh, something like a text link. So obviously this isn't a thank you page. Um, sorry, this isn't a sales page. But we can show you roughly how you do it. So type in here something like uh, So you have your like no thanks uh, text at the bottom. We'll highlight that, go to hyperlink, and just add in the link of your downsell page in here. So, so something like that. Um, I don't actually have a page published at that address, so that will just 404, but you get the idea. Uh, David's saying, do you recommend using chatbots with your pages? And if so, what would you suggest as best practices? Uh, they, they're definitely very useful in certain niches. Um, I don't tend to use them very much myself. Uh, it's, yeah, I think a lot of it depends on what your, on what your audience is used to. Uh, what I would suggest is try and make it seem as human as possible. Like pe people definitely get it. Uh, like in that they're not, they don't really think that there's like someone else on the other end of the screen replying to all their questions. Like they get the idea, like they're going through a, a fairly programmed system. Um, but I think it's quite important to not make it sound too robotic. Um, so if you can, like if you can afford a good writer for that kind of thing, it's definitely worth getting one. Uh, something else I would suggest for this kind of thing is try not to make it too complicated. So if you're asking your prospects a question, then try and keep the questions and answers very simple and stuff where they don't have to think too much. Um, a good example of this kind of thing is like, have you, uh, let's say it's a chat box in a uh, chat box. Oh, I can't talk at all today. Um, let's say it's a chat bot in the vegan niche as an example. Um, and you might have a question on there that's along the lines of, like, have you been a vegan for more than six months or less than six months? That's quite a good question, like for filtering with this kind of thing, because it's very binary. Like no one should, not, no, no one's really gonna have to think about the answer to that. Like it's just more or less. And that makes it easy for your user to continue the conversation. And it's easy for you to program as well, because it's a fairly, like it's a far more limited like amount of answers that people can possibly give you. Uh, Jerry's asking, is it possible to do this to give access to view a video rather than downloading something? Uh, yeah, you can add you can add a video to your thank you page um, if you want to do it that way. Uh, you can add a link to your video uh, in the in the first email that goes out. So yeah, that's definitely possible as well. You can also set up things so that if like when the form um, when the form is submitted, then you can have like a layer appear on your existing page with the video on it and that just starts playing. Um, that's a bit more complicated in setup, but that's also uh, definitely possible. Uh, Francis is asking, so Convertry doesn't have an autoresponder feature. Uh, yep, that's right. Uh, we don't provide an autoresponder like as part of Convertry, but there's like plenty of good solutions out there. Uh, the ones we, uh, the main one we use is Mailchimp. Um, it's good. Like I definitely like it. I see no reason to switch. If I was starting all over again, I might go with MailerLite instead. I've heard some very good things about them. Um, it's just not. Like it doesn't seem quite better enough for the effort of switching. Uh, Dave's asking, is it better to use Convertry for custom landing pages only, or is it better to create an entire website and hosting with Convertry and use a custom domain? And are there templates available for a full website? Uh, to be honest, that depends entirely on what you're what you're trying to do. Um, we originally designed Convertry to be 
for landing pages, but like people use it for websites. Um, we use it for our own website, in fact. Uh, the, this here is the uh, uh, the Convertry website, and you can see it's all it's all built in Convertry itself. So it's definitely possible, and a lot of people do it and do it very successfully. Uh, there are also uh, some website templates available uh, in the template selector. Uh, there's we've definitely got more like funnel page and landing page templates, but there are some website templates in there as well. Uh, Ernie's saying autoresponder in this case is simply add to a list uh, since document delivery is a direct download from Convertry. Uh, yes, in this case, it would be like collecting collecting the emails in an autoresponder so you can contact them later rather than so you can specifically deliver the thing they've asked for. Oops. Uh, Leon's asking, how do I use Cloudflare with Convertry for uh, HTTPS? Uh, Cloudflare is like, I don't use Cloudflare myself, um, but I believe if you're using it, if you're using Cloudflare for your, like if you've got your domains registered there and you're putting your pages on Convertry through that, then I believe you want to use the gray cloud option rather than the orange cloud option. Um, because the orange cloud doesn't play very nicely with the way we've got SSL set up. Um, but the gray cloud should work fine. Uh, Day is asking, does Convertry support embedding a streaming URL such as an HLS streaming URL? Um, I, I'm pretty certain that'd be fine. Um, got to be honest, I'm not 100% on that, but I think that will just work um, if you, especially if you use like our video player, uh, which is the uh, in media. If you go to the video element, so uh, that one there, uh, because we do um, we do something very similar uh, for our own video hosting. Like if you're on the pro plan, you get a certain amount of video hosting with Convertry, and that's what we do with that. And the videos are broken into smaller sections and live streamed, uh, mo mostly because that makes the loading time an awful lot faster. Uh, Francis is asking, what is the advantage and disadvantage of having a convertible provided subdomain? Uh, the advantage is it's very easy. Like you can in set up a new uh, convertible subdomain if we uh, just click out of that we'll go into account uh, domains like you can add a new subdomain just by clicking on add and type in whatever you want uh, in there and that like it's as easy as that set up uh, in terms of disadvantages really it's just about the look of the thing like an awful lot of people um, prefer to have like mybusiness.com as opposed to mybusiness.convertry.com just because it looks more professional. And like a, lo a lot of people prefer that. And if, if you want that, then yeah, set up a custom domain. In terms of performance, I don't think there's any difference. Uh, Judith asking, <clears throat> uh, with the basic level, can funnels that were generated for or by um, a, a competitor be imported? Uh, if you have access to the page importer, uh, which you will find, uh, let's uh, back to campaigns, back into demo funnel. So if you click on import page up here, then if you have the import from an external URL option, uh, then like you can stick the URL in there and that will like take the copy or like Convertry will tr attempt to copy the page. It's generally pretty good. 
Um, it's not going to be 100%, but it's definitely a lot easier than recreating it from scratch. But like, yes, that will work fine with those pages. Uh, Darren's saying, can you demonstrate how to use a convertory subdomain? Uh, well, I mean, we've, we've been using one um, for the uh, uh, for the pages we've just been built. Like all this is built like on a convertory subdomain. Um, if you mean how to set one up, uh, then we can go to account, uh, domains, and we'll click add new subdomain. And let's find, uh, Okay, I'm just going to put in like a string of just a string of numbers there, just so it's more likely to be available. And we'll click add. Nope, so someone else already has that one already. Let's try seven eight nine. There we are. So we click add, and we now have our new uh, convertry.com subdomain. So that's all you need to do to make one. Uh, Michael, uh, yes, there will be a replay. Uh, we're, we're recording this at the moment. Um, you can also go to the knowledge base, which is certainly on one of these tabs. There. And if you click on uh, getting started webinars, then you can see the replays of the past showings as well. Uh, Leon's asking, does Convertry have a chatbot system? Uh, we do not have a chatbot system. Uh, Michael's also asking, can you show how to create a one-page sales page? I mean, it's basically the same process um, that you just saw, just like taking longer because there's more content. Uh, you can also use one of the templates that we've got. Uh, campaigns. So if we go to new page, let's let's go for the diet one. I quite like that one. So we'll just preview this sales page. So this is an example of like a long sales page that's all built in Convertry. So you can use that as a template. You can swap out the images, change the text. It's probably the quickest way to get it done. Uh, Tony is asking, how do you append a, a tracking code to pass into the lead capture software um, so I can track the opt-ins from a particular opt-in form? In fact, I put a video on that up in the Facebook group just before uh, we uh, just before we got on this call. So let's dive in there. So if you're not in the uh, Convertry Facebook group yet, then like, I do recommend you come in there. Like I'm in there like fairly frequently. Uh, so is Dan. He's one of the people on our team. Um, Andy, my business partner, you'll see him there as well. And there we go. So this is something I posted up, let you see, just a couple of hours ago. So I'll take that link, stick that in the, ch stick this in the chat. So if you're a member of the group, you should just be able to click that and go and watch the video. Um, if you're not, then like it'll ask you to apply for the group. Um, if you apply, then you will get in. Um, we approve people like to go in the group like every morning or every weekday morning. So you won't be waiting that long to get in there. Uh, Day is asking, is the process seamless to build sites in Convertry and host el elsewhere, such as Netlify? Um, basically, Convertry pages will always be hosted on Convertry. Um, that's the way the system is designed. Uh, so you can't like take a site that's built in Convertry and put it on 
uh, another hosting system. But we like to think our hosting is pretty good. Like we, we've done a lot of work to make it as fast as possible and also incredibly stable. Like we had um, back in December uh, last year, one of our users had a, um, basically they got a, they did something wrong on one of their scripts and basically they ended up reloading the same page like over and over and over again. It, uh, yeah, I think it was, I think we had about a billion views and the network didn't even blink. So you don't, you don't have to worry about traffic problems. Uh, Dave's asking, if I build a website with Convertry, can I clone it and can I export it as a zip file? Uh, you can clone it. Uh, basically, if you just put all the pages in a funnel, uh, like we've done uh, with this one here, if you go into more, then clone, you can just add a new funnel name, hit clone, and it will create an entirely new copy of it. Uh, you can't export it as a zip file. Uh, Ernie's asking, uh, I'm building a website. Where are the website templates? And yes, we did mention menus earlier. Uh, and we will uh, get to them once I've finished off all the demo stuff, which there won't be too much more of now. Um, so for website templates, if we go to new page, Then we can see some templates come in sets. Some of these are website sets. So I think there's some down here. So we've got an affiliate review site there. Uh, there's a home repair website that's um, that's kind of in process at the moment. We're adding the, temp the page templates at the moment. Uh, there's a, a site based around a, like a nutritionist theme, one around photography. So th there's a few in there. Uh, the gray and orange cloud in Cloudflare that I mentioned earlier, there are two ways of setting up um, your, I think it's your domain in Cloudflare. Uh, one is represented by an orange cloud and one is represented by a gray cloud. And I know that the gray cloud is the one you want to use with Convertry. Um, I'm sorry, I can't be too much more specific than that because I don't use Cloudflare myself. So this is mostly based on stuff I've seen other people comment and the problems we've had to fix in the past. Uh, Mark's asking, if you don't use a text box, can you set on Convertry so if the mouse scroll is going away from the button, can it automatically take the visitor to the downsell page? Uh, you can't have it automatically take the visitor to the downsell page, um, but you can, like if the mouse is going off the screen, you can put, you like you can have a pop-up appear um, that like gives them the link, ask them to go there. So it's all very, like, so it's very in, in their face about it. Uh, so you can't make it automatic, but you can, like make it very obvious. Uh, Mark's asking, uh, can you show where to upload a video? So yes, if you have the uh, if you have the pro uh, level, then there are some uh, you get some video hosting with it. So if we go into the uh, campaigns area, then you see there is a videos option on the left-hand side. So you can click that. Um, I don't have any videos on this account yet. Uh, but if you want to put one on there, then you just click the upload video. You can select your video file, add the name, and it just goes up like that. 
and then you can play any of those videos through the convertry video element on your on your pages. Uh, Leon's asking, does Convertry provide the SSL? And yes, yes, we do. So. Uh, Judith asking, what level has the importer feature? Uh, Pro and Agency always have the importer. Um, some other special offers that we've run in the past have included the importer on other levels. Uh, Francis is asking, would SEO be a true limitation to having a convertory provided subdomain? Honestly, I don't think so. Uh, like plenty of like convertory subdomains have ranked, like the speed makes them pretty good. I don't um, like some people think that like having like having a subdomain is harder to uh, like is is harder to rank than a custom domain. I don't honestly see it myself. Um, if it makes a difference, it certainly doesn't seem to make much of one. But that said, like if it's something you're concerned about, then you can add a custom domain like just as easily. Uh, Ian's asking, is Quizitri still live? Uh, yeah, it's still live. It's still available. Um, it's still supported. Uh, we're not working on adding new features at the moment, but like the app is still there, and like we're still fixing bugs with it, like if any appear. Uh, Dave's asking, how many sites can I host on Convertry with the Pro Plan? I believe. Um, I believe you get 30 custom domains with the uh, pro plan, so 30, assuming you want a separate domain for each. And does uh, Convertry have a click tracking option, or should I continue to use Click Magic? Um, I'll probably keep using Click Magic. Uh, we don't have a like a direct click tracking option like that in there. Uh, Michael's asking, will the Convertry logo always show on all the pages built with Convertry? Uh, nope, doesn't need to. If you go to uh, the affiliate uh, area in your account, then you've got the option to show the Powered by Convertry badge or not. Uh, if you do show it, then like that automatically is an affiliate link. So if anyone clicks that, they go through to our website. If they sign up like after clicking your badge, then you will get 30%. Um, paid out after 30 days. Uh, so, like that's a uh, that, that's why quite a lot of people leave them on there. Um, but you can take, but you can like take them all off if you want. You just need to unclick, unclick that, and then republish your pages. Uh, you can also do that on a page by page basis if you want. So if you want to show it on some pages but not others, then you can leave it on here and just turn it off on individual pages. Uh, Dave's asking, if I use the page importer to import a five-page website, do I import one page at a time? Uh, yes. A uh, page importer will always import one page at a time. Um, first, I mean, partially for making sure it um, like, doesn't take too long if it's trying to like spider through a whole load of pages. And also because it's like, you've you got to be careful making sure it knows when to stop. Otherwise, you try importing the entire internet and things do not like that. Uh, Leon's asking, will you ever add click tracking or lead scoring? Uh, maybe. These things are always maybes. Um, they largely depend on how much um, how much people want them. Is how we usually prioritize the features that we add. Uh, we have a feature upvote board, which, with any luck, 
I have the URL saved in here. Yep. So. So this is our uh, feature upvote board at the moment. So these features, like some of them, are things that we've come up with. Um, some of them are things that like other users have suggested, but they go they go on the feature upvote board, and a link to this goes out every Tuesday. So you can come along, you can vote for the ones you want, and it's not like it's not the only thing uh, that we use to decide like what gets developed next, but it is a factor. Uh, Dave's asking, where do I go to add uh, meta information and description keywords, so on, for the landing page? Uh, you can do that through the page menu. So we'll just uh, go back to our demo page and I'll show you. So in the page menu up here, then you can see there is a meta info tab and you can add in like the page title, the page description, the keywords, and um, you can switch on no index, no follow. Uh, you can add the like the author details, so all that stuff's in there. Uh, there's also the social settings tab here, which will let you do stuff like add the open graph image, which is the image that gets shared when you stick on Facebook. Um, you can add like the Twitter ID, the Search Console ID, all that kind of thing. Okay, so that was a a bit of a digression, but there is one more thing I want to show you. I'll take a swig of water and then we'll get into that. And what I want to show you now are basically a few, a few little hacks that I find make using the editor an awful lot easier. So this is just like an example convertory page. So based around like a cafe. And it looks fine. Uh, if we switch on element outlines, which we can do through the display menu, this will let you see how it's constructed. Now these here, these are just like for your use in the editor. Like you can hit publish with these things on, you won't get like these hot pink outlines. Um, it's there entirely to see, like in this case, like you can see exactly which of these elements are being contained. And if one is maybe like slightly outside, then when with the element outlines on it, it's far easier to tell. And so a few things I want to show you that I find make uh, using the editor a lot easier, especially when I'm like adapting templates and that kind of thing. Is first of all, one thing that people often want to do is just remove and change out sections. So maybe, like, okay, let's say they don't want this menu anymore. So you can hit delete and just get rid of the whole thing. Uh, maybe they let's say they don't want about either. Maybe not even the gallery. So that's removed a load of sections, but we now have this big blank area in the page. Now, an easy way to uh, to close that up is to use this feature here, which is remove white space above. So what we do is we select our section here, click remove white space above, and that just snaps right up to the top. So that's quite a good way, like if you want the top and bottom of a template, say the, the top section and the footer, you can just delete everything else, use remove white space, that just snaps in the middle and your page is like far easier to do rather than having to drag every element around. And speaking of dragging elements around, uh, a very useful keyboard shortcut uh, to use is shift and drag, and that will let you move a lot of elements at once. Now, in a case like this, like let's say actually we want to add a section in. 
Now we can take like we can take this section, we can pick it up, we can drag it. But if we do that, then it's just moving that element. Like we would have to move every section individually. We don't really want to do that. So instead, with this top element selected, we hold down the shift key, we drag down, and that moves not only this element, but everything underneath it as well. So that lets us very easily open up a new section of the page. And we can drop in our new panel, full width it, and we've got a new little section that we can add stuff into. This also works just as well moving things up. So hold shift, move up, and everything uh, below it moves with it. Uh, another thing that is quite useful to know about is are the alignment options. Now I showed some of these um, earlier uh, when I was putting the page together. One that I didn't show that is quite useful is for evenly spacing elements around a page. So let's say we're trying to space these uh, testimonials here. We can select all three. In the alignment options, we'll go with uh, distribute horizontally and it will lay them out evenly between the two. We can actually show it a bit easier if I uh, create a few more of these. So let's say we've got, um, so let's clone a couple of these. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag the element and that will create a copy. Do that for you as well. Uh, we can do the same uh, with contained elements. So if we hold down the Alt key and drag the container, it will also clone uh, the contents. But we want to see uh, the alignment bits. So what I'm going to do is I am going to space all these uh, little people images nicely across this page. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is make the container that I want them to be spaced between. Just fit them in the guidelines. Now we'll just send that back and bring it forward. So we've got uh, that container there. I'll make the container transparent so it's easier to see. So again, that's going to background, uh, background fill and we'll just take that transparency slider all the way to the bottom. And now, uh, with this uh, with this container selected from the alignment options, first of all, we're going to use middle align just to get everything nicely uh, vertically aligned within the element. And then we're going to select horizontally contained. And that just spaces them very nicely across the page. And if we turn element outlines off again, you can see the effect. So it's not the kind of thing you have to do by eye. Um, you can space as many elements as, as you want out. Like they'll all be nice and even. And you don't have to worry too much about columns either because Convertual will just work all that out for you. You can just put in as many elements as you want. Uh, but the real thing that I want to show you on this page is the mobile adaption. Uh, because that is something that a lot of people can struggle with uh, when they're first starting with Convertry. And the easiest way um, to show this is to show you how the mobile algorithm works. So let's say on this page, if we go into the mobile view. Now this is the automatic version. And you can see there's some issues with this. So we've got, for instance, these headings have been separated uh, from the text. See on the desktop, then they're together. On the mobile, they're not. Uh, the headshots have been separated from the testimonials. Uh, down here, you've got these social icons all in a vertical uh, line, which I mean, to be honest, that's not really too bad, but I think it's rather nicer if they look the way they do on the desktop, like nice and horizontal.
uh, again, I can see some questions building up. Again, I'll go through them all uh, at the end. And the reason it's come out like this is because of the way that Convertry does the mobile conversion. Essentially, Convertry will start looking at the top left of your page and it'll run along to the right and then it'll move down and so on. And it will just add elements as it finds them. So in this case, start at the top left. First element it finds is this one. In fact, let's switch the element outlines on again. It'll be easier to see. So the first element it finds is this one uh, with the logo. And so that's the first thing uh, it puts in the mobile view. Next one, we're open 24 seven. That comes second. Next one is the image. Uh, that comes third. And that far is fine. But then we get to this section where it hits bread, then it hits pastry, then it hits coffee. Then it comes down to these elements and hits these three paragraphs. And so it puts them in that order, but that, that's not all we want. And the way we make Convertry like put things where we want them automatically is by using containers, because Convertry will understand containment. So I'm going to drag a panel on. And I'm going to put it like that. We'll just uh, send that backward. Now I'm going to leave this. Um, I'm going to leave this like with the gray background, just so you can easily see what's going on. Uh, you don't have to. Like transparent containers work just the same as containers with a color. Now we're going to do the same thing on the others. And again, that's just checking I've actually got the containment in there properly. So now we've got all three of these. Like you can see they're all like in their own container. And now if we go to the mobile view, then you can see Convertry's kept them together because the first thing it's hit, like it's not bread, it's the container. So it's hit the container and it's added the container with everything in it. And it's remobilized the stuff inside it, which lines things up just as we want them. And that means it'll do it automatically. Don't want that one anymore. Uh, we can do the same thing with these testimonials if we just extend these containers down. So they also include the headshots. And again, I'm just kind of throwing these around the page a bit, a bit at the moment. But if I wanted to um, align them up nicely, then again, that's quite easy. Uh, with the alignment options that we've got. Now we'll go back to mobile and you can see it's done the same thing. So things kept in the container, so they're kept together on the mobile view. And now we've just got these ones to deal with. And we can keep these uh, together by putting them in a small container, and again, I'll leave the um, I'll leave the background color on there just so it's easier to see. Now, if your if your container is less than three hundred and twenty pixels wide, then Convertry will understand that it doesn't actually have to change it on the mobile view. Like it's narrow enough to fit in mobile view, just like it would on the desktop. So in this case, we'll just check the size. So we've got that container selected. We'll go to positioning. And see the width there is 225, so that's less than 320. So we'll go to mobile view. And Convertry has just kept it just as it is in the desktop version. 
if we make it a bit wider, let's say we make it 362. Now Convertery has to shrink the container, and so it's remobilized all the elements within it. So larger than 320, it looks like that. Uh, smaller than 320, it keeps things the same. So understanding these things and understanding how to lay like your page out in this way, using the containment to tell Convertry what to keep together, you can get the mobile view looking far better, far quicker uh, than if you just throw the elements on the page. Now, that's not saying you won't ever have to do any adjustment. Like I often do some adjustments to mobile view because I like making the mobile view mobile specific. Like I don't like I want it to be like a proper mobile experience, so I like adjusting things a bit. Um, but you can get Convertry to automatically produce something an awful lot closer like to what you want, certainly to the extent where you don't have to change it if you don't want to. And so let's have a look at some of uh, the questions that have come up. So. So Leon's asking, uh, when you move elements on the main page, does it automatically move it on mobile? Yeah, one sec. Uh, essentially, Convertry has a mobile algorithm that it runs, um, and it's always running it in the background as long as you haven't already adjusted the mobile view. Uh, so at the moment, like I haven't made any changes to this mobile view. Uh, so let's uh, so let's take these testimonials here. So at the moment we've got like the hipster with the sunglasses at the top and the woman at the bottom. So if I swap these round, so the woman's there, the hipster's over there. We'll go back to mobile view and they've been reversed. And apparently I left him a bit outside the container. So Convertry's put him down below. That's why you need to be careful with this stuff. <laughs> but you can see that has adjusted the uh, the mobile view in line with the with the desktop one. If I make changes, so let's say I'm going to adjust some of these. Uh, yeah, I like that. Just something quick. Now I've made changes to this view. Convertry is no longer going to be automatically adjusting that algorithm. Um, because I've made these adjustments, it figures like I probably want to keep them. And so now if I make changes uh, to the desktop view. Oh, that'll be why. Yes. See, so what happened there is the, um, uh, the hipster was added to the page before the container here so technically it's underneath so it's not really contained that will be why it's uh... yeah that's better but yes but now i've made adjustments to that mobile view then the algorithm won't automatically run we can rerun it ourselves. If we click on Remobilize, we click Remobilize All. And it will auto adjust the page, but that will also undo the changes that you've made. Uh, Ronnie's asking about the cloning keyboard shortcut. Um, so you hold down Alt and then just drag the element you want to clone. So, so if we've got this text box here, hold down the Alt key and drag that and we get a clone of the text box. If we select this container here with all the stuff in it, we hold down Alt, we get a clone of the container and everything inside it. But you just have to hold down Alt and drag the element.
Uh, Leon's asking, when you create templates, are you creating the pages with containers uh, so we have less work to do on mobile? Uh, yes. Yeah, our, our templates should all be like constructed in that way. Uh, Sheena's asking, why can't I see the questions? Um, I think that's just because that's just how GoToWebinar works. Um, I don't think that uh, GoToWebinar shows the uh, questions to the group. It just shows them to the presenter. Uh, Tony's asking, is it always best to get the desktop version as you want before adjusting anything on the mobile version? Uh, that's definitely the way I do it. Um, I think it's definitely easier to create the desktop version of the page as you want it and then go to the mobile view and adjust after that. I, but I think that uh, works far better. Uh, yes, creating global elements and menus for websites. Let me show you how to do that. No, that's fine, we won't save those changes. So first of all, let's show you how to make a collection. So Convertory comes with some collections already in there. Uh, so the top item on the elements bar, you can click that and add uh, some of our own collections. So collections here are there's various header templates. Uh, there's a foot. There's various footer templates. Uh, there's some column layouts. Uh, some people asked for basically uh, empty containers that they could then fill stuff with. Uh, based so in that case, so they would find it easier on mobile. Like they there's just some nice evenly spaced uh, column layouts that they can just add elements into. Uh, so there's a load of those. Uh, there's also some forms that can just be added in. Now, if you want to add in any of these, then you just select uh, the collection, hit add, and that will just be added straight onto your page. You can make your own. Uh, let's turn this panel here into a collection. So we're going to select uh, this back in panel here. We'll go into the general properties and you'll find a button at the bottom uh, called create collection. And this will save it obviously as like in your home one. So let's call that, uh, I don't know, um, slimming opt in, save. So that has now. Uh, saved the collection into the library. So if we go to another page, and this will work on any page in the account, like it doesn't have to be in the same funnel. In the collections, then we'll now find uh, that one we just made is available. And we can add that uh, direct onto the page. So that is how you do uh, collections and how you save like things you've built for use on other pages. For menus, the easiest way to do that is through a menu element and you'll find that uh, here on the uh, elements toolbar. So you can add uh, different items in here. So I have item one on the menu, item two, Item three. Let's maybe get rid of that one. Uh, you can set you can set links, so you can either set a like an external link, uh, you can set an, set an internal link, or you can turn it into a sub menu. And add uh, different items in there. So you can change, you can change some amount of styling. So you can change the basics, like the text color. You can change the background. You can change the background of the buttons. You can change uh, the font family, just like you can with anything else. Cool. 
Android Serif, very robotic. Uh, there are also a range of skins you can pick from. And the advantage of using um, the menu element is that you will automatically get a nice mobile version. So if we go into uh, the mobile view, can not remobilize that, then you'll see it automatically turns into a hamburger version uh, so that someone can click the hamburger and just get the menu, uh, the menu options appear underneath it. Uh, we actually use this element on our own website. Uh, this up here, this is built using that menu element. So see, it is something that yeah, we do use in practice. And so yeah, that I think is probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can build it manually, like if you want a bit more flexibility in how the menus look and act, uh, then you can build them through uh, text elements and layers. Uh, that's generally what people did before we had the menu element available. Um, but this element does make it an awful lot faster. And you get quite a lot of flexibility with it. Uh, Dave's asking, if I want to use a different login for a second convertible website, do I need the agency plan to do that? Uh, yes, in that case, you would want to set up um, the you'd want to set up your second site on a sub account um, and give like give your client access to that, and then they can set up their own login, or you can set it up for them. And yes, the the sub accounts come with the agency account. Uh, Leon's asking, if I create an opt-in element as a collection and want to use that collection on another page, will it transfer settings such as the autoresponder, autoresponder info and so on? Uh, it won't transfer those. You will need to set up the autoresponder again. Um, but the full look of the, the look of the form, um, the field type settings on the inputs, like that will all be transferred over. Uh, Dave's saying, I don't understand the difference between shared hosting and cloud hosting. Um, is Convertory a cloud hosting platform? <clears throat> so the, uh, the main difference with this, as I understand it, is that um, basically shared hosting is like it's all it's all on the cloud, as it were. Um, shared hosting is basically hosting where you're sharing the like you're sharing the servers with other people. Um, cloud hosting, I think is, I mean, that mostly just means hosting. I mean, the, the opposite of shared hosting is where you have like your own dedicated server. Uh, I think Convertry is like, Convertry itself has its own dedicated servers. Like we're not on a generic shared account um, with other people. Uh, as Convertry users, then like you're sharing our hosting with, like with the Convertry user base. Um, but given the capacity, like of the hosting system that we've built, like you don't have to worry about the usual issues you get with shared hosting. Like you're not going to run out of resources at any point. Um, there's just too much capacity there for that to uh, make a difference. Uh, G is asking, how do you manipulate layers? Um, I want to change or erase uh, bottom layer text. Can you show us? Uh, I can show you how to manipulate layers. So let's add a couple in here. So we're going to add a layer. Uh, we'll click on the layers uh, option in this top toolbar. And there are some, again, there's some pre-made ones, which I'll probably use one of because it will just be easier. Um, you can also, uh, if you create the layer of your own, you can also like save that as a template. Like I've got one of these on this account already, like this little exit pop thing that I've saved. 
So let's use, uh, uh, let's put this sticky header on there. So let's see, it will give that name, sticky header is fine. So you can adjust layers just like you can adjust anything else. Um, you can see when you're working on a layer because it'll be ticked uh, in the layers panel and the title of it is going to be bold. You can pick stuff up and move it around just like you can on the base page. Like there's no there's no restrictions there. You also see we're working on the layer because we can't like, okay, maybe we can. Um, we shouldn't be able to click anything that's on the main page. Um, oh, it's probably because it's sticky, isn't it? Yeah. There, now we've got the non-transparent background. We can't click anything that's on the main page, but we can click the stuff that's on the layer. But you can adjust that uh, however you want. Uh, you can add as many layers as you want to the page. So maybe we'll add this exit pop one this time. And again, you can put the forms on the layers. Uh, you can adjust the text. You can swap out the images. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by change or erase a bottom layer text. Uh, could you possibly explain that a bit? Okay, Leon saying he's really liking the system. Um, would really what would really set it off is click tracking and lead scoring. Uh, let's say if you email the uh, feature suggestion in support, it'll go on the upvote board. And like if if enough people are interested in that kind of thing, we'll definitely consider it. Um, and yeah, and you have a great response time for customer service, which is severely lacking in most of the other stuff out there. Well, th thank you very much uh, for saying so. I'll pass that on to the support team. They're, they're always very happy when they get like comments like that. Uh, Ernie's asking about the difference between a panel and a layer. Uh, a panel is an element uh, like, uh, so this gray thing here, like with the stuff in it, that is a panel. Like that's an element that just gets added onto a page. Uh, a layer is like a whole, um, a whole new, well, layer, I guess, that goes on top of the website. So this layer here that we're working on, this, like this exit pop one, it's like a whole new canvas that sits on top of the base page. So we can we can adjust stuff on here, we can switch it on, we can switch it off and have the, um, I mean, so you have the whole thing appear or disappear as a unit. Now you can do, like if you want, you can get a similar effect by building up with panels, um, but it is generally, a lot easier to use layers because it's far easier to manipulate in the editor rather than having to like hide all the elements that you were going to have appear otherwise. With layers, you can just switch them on and off. It's a lot easier to uh, create your page, I find. Uh, G saying, I put in a photo on an existing template and I can't figure out how to get rid of the original text that ended up underneath it. Uh, you should just be able to click the text element and hit the delete button. Um, so like on this one, if we decide we don't want this text anymore, uh, we just select the element, uh, hit delete, and you know that'll get rid of it. Um, all the templates are built like in Convertry, just like you just saw me making these pages. Uh, so you can manipulate them however you want. There aren't any fixed elements or like locked items. So there's nothing stopping you changing it up, like however you want.
Uh, Dave is saying, uh, do you recommend not using multiple large images for the homepage slider to improve load speed, or does it not matter? Uh, it definitely matters less with ConvertTree than it would with other platforms because we do a lot of image optimization. Um, like I said, this uh, like this image here that like that I originally got off Pixabay. That's like a four five megabyte file. Like when I added it on there, um, but if we hit like if we hit view page, you saw how fast that loaded. Like it's very quick. Um, that said. Like even with convertery, the more stuff you add to the page, like the the slower it's going to be, or or like the longer it's going to take. Um, that is especially true of stuff like a home, like, blah, like a home slider, like which is going to be above the fold, because that's like the first impression people get of your page. So, like you don't have to worry about it too much, but I would keep an eye on it. Yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions or is there anything I've missed? Uh, Mark's asking, will the replay be up in 24 hours? Uh, maybe not 24 hours, but it should be pretty soon. Um, like we'll start, we'll start processing it like pretty much as soon as we're off this call. Um, that will normally take a little while. Uh, it will, it will definitely be up in the knowledge base by the end of Tuesday. Uh, that's the deadline we always set. Uh, it will probably be there a bit earlier. So I'm not sure it'll be there on Friday, but it'll almost certainly be there on Monday. Uh, Daniel's asking, is it possible to get sub accounts under the new pricing model? Uh, it is. Um, they won't be available. Um, they're not available direct on the website as yet. Uh, they will. They will be available in the app. Like you'll be able to just buy them through there. Until they are available through the app, then if you want them, um, just email in support, and you'll be able to pick them up that way. Uh, Ken saying, I was told you have one of the top converting capture page templates already prepared. We just have to ask for it. Um, it's possible you're referring to the perfect squeeze page. I think that was, I think that was given away as a bonus on a special offer we did a few months ago. Um, if you got convertry through that, then yes, you can definitely have it. Uh, just email in support, like send the receipt in, and they will sort it out for you. Uh, one final question from Mark: How uh, how to clone an existing funnel? Uh, you can clone any funnel in Convertry. Basically, all you do is go to the more link, like on the on the funnel card. Then one of the options up here is clone. Add in your new funnel name, hit clone, and you'll get a complete copy of it. Uh, Daniel's asking, could you briefly overview the new pricing model and how it differs from the old one? Uh, yep, certainly. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know, on uh, it was in fact just Tuesday. God, it feels so much longer ago. Um, on Tuesday, uh, our prices changed. Now this won't, like if you've already got a Convertry account, like this isn't going to apply to you. Like if you've got 
like an old account, then you get grandfathered into those prices. Um, this is just like for new accounts going forward. Uh, but the prices uh, were changed. So basically, like before, we had uh, three different uh, price tiers. Um, like we had the standard version, we had the pro version, we had the agency version. Um, and they were, I think, 59, 69, and 199 every month. Um, and you could buy them monthly, you could buy them annual, you could buy them for two years. And this meant like when people were when people were coming to sign up for Convertory, they were choosing between like nine different plans. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so we've streamlined it. So instead, you're just choosing between the two. It's a basic, like basic pro plan. Uh, this comes with everything that's on the pro tier. Uh, you can get it monthly uh, for 99 a month, or you can get it like at a fairly significant discount if you pay, pay annually. Uh, the stuff that was available on agency before, uh, so things like sub accounts, uh, they will uh, fairly soon, I hope, uh, be available uh, to purchase in the app. So you'll be able to, like, if you want some sub accounts, you can just click the button and add them on. Uh, we don't have that in there quite yet, but until it's there, you can, as I was saying earlier, you can just email the support and say, like, I would like some sub accounts. They'll provide you a link for it. Um, soon we will also like be able to do similar things with things like the quantity of traffic, quantity of funnels, quantity of pages. So you'll be able to adjust those limits to what you need, basically. Like if you need if you need some more pages, but you don't need more funnels, then you won't need to like upgrade to a whole new plan um, that comes with loads of stuff you might not want. You'll just be able to say, like, give me another 250 pages and add that onto your subscription. And that that's the way it's going to work. I say we're not quite there yet. Um, at the moment, like you can get the base plan and you can email support for some of the other stuff. Uh, but that's it. That's the long term plan for it. And I say long term, hopefully not that long term. Um, sub accounts certainly should be available in the app pretty soon. I'm hoping like the other the other options will also be available not long after that. Uh, the pricing for sub accounts is basically the like we haven't changed the sub account pricing um like from what it from what it was before the price rise so that is 97 dollars a month for 25 of them and you can add on like as many of those blocks as you want uh we will um we will definitely um hopefully reasonably soon uh be able to offer them in different amounts so you'll be able to buy, like, you'll be able to buy them in bulk. You'll be able to buy them, like, a, in a lower quantity, uh, should you want. At the moment, it's just 25, uh, 25 for 97. Uh, what can't someone do in a sub account? Now, mo most things you can do, uh, like the idea. The idea of sub accounts is that they're designed effectively as client delivery uh, mechanisms. So you build a website for a client, you can put that website in a sub account and give your client like access to it. Uh, there are certain things they can't do. Um, if you're in a sub, like a client in a sub account cannot make new pages. Like they can they can edit the ones that you put there, uh, but they can't make new ones on their own. Uh, basically, that means that if like since these are designed for like website and funnel builders, um, that means that if you're um, like if you've got a client who just wants a headline changed, then like you're not going to get a phone call at three a.m. because they found a typo or because they want to change a word in the headline. Like they can just go in, they can edit it. Jobs are gone. Um, what what they can't do is make new pages. So if they want an entirely new page added to their site. Then they still need to come to you. Uh, they still need to pay you for it. Uh, if you exceed your impressions, uh, then at that point, I mean, no nothing happens like immediately. We're not gonna like immediately cut off like your pages. Basically, you'll get when you're getting close, you'll get an email uh, warning you that it's happening. Uh, when you go over, you'll get an email like asking you to 
basically explaining that you've gone over your, your impressions for the month and giving you a few days to upgrade. Um, I think it's, I think you get five days at the moment. Wouldn't swear to that, but I think it's five days. So you can upgrade at any point in the five days, like to add on like an extra, extra traffic block or as much as you need. And if you like, if you add it on, then basically you won't even notice like, no, like there won't be any interruption in service. If you don't like then after the time has run out, then like, yes, at that point, the pages will be cut off. Uh, but you will get a grace period. Like you're never going to, you're never going to wake up one morning and find you got a traffic spike overnight and suddenly no one can access your pages anymore. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? I think we're at the bottom of the list now. Okay, it looks like that's it. Um, Oh, no. oh, as soon as I say that, another couple come in. <laughs> uh, when is the next webinar? Uh, we run these uh, every couple of weeks. So uh, Thursday and the week after next. Um, we do basically like what I run is like it's this presentation every time. Like I'm always here. Like you can ask me any questions. So that bit like the Q&A will be different. Uh, the basic presentation like will be the same because I say it is designed for new users to get them up to speed, and like there will be a load more new users after those two weeks happen. Uh, we do sometimes run like other more advanced training as well. Um, I've been meaning to put one together on uh, video stuff for about the last month. It's just a matter of finding time to to do it. Uh, but that is when the next one of these will be. Uh, Daniel's asking, is there any way to access previous webinars on how to use this software to start an agency? Uh, we do actually have one uh, on that. Um, in the in the knowledge base, if you go to uh, training webinars, you can see there's quite a collection here. So this is uh, help.convertry.com and then click on training webinars after that. I'll stick the link in the chat as well. There you go. So you see, there's a few um, there's a few different tra trainings here, uh, largely based around like doing different things uh, with the software. Uh, so there's one on like there's some general getting started stuff. There's one here on actions and events. Uh, there's one on uh, connecting emails. Uh, so if you like want to connect a third party email account to Convertry, you can do that. Uh, there's one just walking through the full like funnel process. Like I created a very basic funnel uh, in this webinar. Uh, this training here uh, from the 26th of January, uh, that one runs through creating a like more detailed funnel, like with the sales page with the upsell. Uh, but the one you're going to be interested in is uh, this one at the top uh, interview with a guy called Jim Rigney. Now Jim Rigney is one of our like he's a he's been using Convertry for like a very long time. Um, I think he probably got in like on our very first launch. And he's you like he's built a very successful agency uh, with Convertry. Um, he's done. Let's say when we uh, when we recorded this webinar, he had made um, about seventy five grand using it. And this isn't like should be clear. This isn't something Jim does as a job now. He like he he's kept his job. He likes his job. Um, he does just does Convertry as like a sideline thing, like in his spare time, and he's made like seventy five grand doing that. Um, I think he's up to over a hundred grand now. So he's done, like he's a very clever guy. He's done really, really well with it. Um, but this webinar was an interview that Andy, uh, my business partner, did with Jim about how he did it and running through his processes. So that's that one's well worth a watch.
Uh, Ian's asking, uh, do you have time to show how to import a questionnaire, uh, like with Quizitri? Uh, Quizitri itself is fairly easy to add in. Um, if we go to back into one of these pages, we just go into the more elements area of the uh, of the toolbar. Then you can see there's a special uh, Quizitri quiz element. So you can add that in there. Like that's the that's the basic one. Um, but if you've got your own quiz in Quizitri, you just swap out like the URL here uh, for the for the URL of your Quizitri quiz, and that will just embed uh, into your Convertry page. If you're using a different platform, uh, then as long as they give you an HTML embed code, uh, then you can add it via an HTML element, which is uh, that second one from the bottom. So just drag that onto your page, click Edit HTML, stick the code uh, that your platform gives you in there, and that will just add that into your Convertry page. And it should be as simple as that. Uh, is there a list of web designers somewhere that specialize in Convertry? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I mean, we, we don't keep them, keep on ourselves. Uh, there may well be one out there. Uh, the best way um, that I would suggest to go find one is to go into the uh, Convertry Clubhouse Facebook group. Like this is where, like this is where most of our users like hang out to talk about Convertry and like chat about pages and that kind of thing. Um, like I'm in there an awful lot. Uh, other members of our company are in there an awful lot. Uh, Jim, who you saw um, doing the interview on that webinar, like he's there fairly frequently as well. Off, often sharing some like really pretty good content. Uh, so you can ask in there, there's going to be, like you're going to find quite a lot of people in there, obviously, who specialize in doing Convertry pages. So if you put a request in there, then I'm sure you'll get a few bytes. Uh, Ernie's asking, like using a menu with several pages, how are they connected um, with the arrows or the URL? Uh, you'll want to put the URLs of your different pages in to the menu element. Uh, you can use the arrows on the on the funnel planner uh, to sh to like to visualize how they're connected. But to make the actual connection in Convertry, you'll need to add the URL into the um, into the box on the menu element. So if we just stick like item one in there. Uh, then if you click on the down arrow here, make sure the item type is link and just add your link in there. And that will make like item one link to whatever you put in here. And the, uh, the sub menus work the same way. So you can add items, add items into the sub menu and you can set links just the same way as you would at the top level. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I think that is it. So, okay, so thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, I hope you found it useful. I say we'll be doing another one of these in a couple of weeks. Um, obviously, if you have questions before then, then please do just like go into the Facebook group, stick a question in there. Um, like I'm around there a lot, Dan's around there a lot. Uh, so, like one of us will be there to answer it pretty quickly and like there's a pretty good chance that we won't need to because like some of our other users will have got there first. So, so 
yes have a have a good evening have a good day and i'll maybe see you in a couple of weeks thanks very much everyone